for being here. My name is Carlos Aguilar. I'm from Great Care in LA, and I'm very, very happy to be here tonight with the director of Eternal Memory, Maite Alberdi. And we're also so, so happy to have Paulina Rutia herself with us tonight. And thank you for uh, interpreting. Um, let's start from the beginning as people are picking up the pieces of their hearts <laughs> in this theater. Um, Maite, did you know uh, Paulina and Augusto personally before this film? I'm sure that you were aware of Augusto's work. Uh, how did the approach uh, begin? Uh, no, I didn't uh, know Augusto personally before this film. Uh, of course, that both of them were very famous and important, and, and I knew about them, or that they, they are important uh, persons for all Chile, I think. And I read an interview that I was to make openly in a big magazine to tell to everybody that he got Alzheimer in a very high point of his career. He was in the he was direct in the directory of the public television in that moment. Um, and I was surprised by the interview. And a few months after, I was hired to make a lecture in a university and where Paulina work. And I arrived and I saw her with him in a work context. And I was really surprised that she integrated him to her work and everybody was that work with her was like helping her to be there and they were in love and with desire and it was like what is this because I usually see people that depend on other isolated so it was surprising and for me it was like this is a love story and I tried to convince her telling like I want to make this love story love story and she was no there is not love story here there's nothing to shoot here. And it's taken me like a year to combine here. I was the, from the first day to say like, yes, what is the problem? Of course. And one day uh, he combines here like very clearly. I remember we were having lunch and, and he said like, why is it going to be so embarrassing that I cannot take the fork? Like, I'm not embarrassing about that. Like, I'm not embarrassing to show my own fertility. And yeah, we clearly believe that for him, a film should exist in spite of everything. Paulina, what did you, what were you reluctant? And, you know, was this moment that might dimension the moment you changed your mind? Um, porque tenía tanta duda porque porque primero porque no era era una era una decisión que para gusto siempre fue muy clara uh, why was I so hesitant uh, first of all it was it was a decision that for Augusto was always pretty clear eh, Augusto siempre dijo perfecto Augusto was uh, always like Perfect, let's do this. Eh, sin embargo, eh, las decisiones con esta enfermedad eh, hay que tomarlas colectivamente. Uh, however, decisions with the, this, this disease needs to be taken uh, collectively. Entonces, eh, sus hijos, sus amigos y yo particularmente. So his friends, his children and me particularly. Me costó mucho eh, so it took us a lot of uh, effort and time to come to that decision. Y yo, en particular, eh, me convencí, eh, al igual que ustedes, supongo, cuando, eh, eh, cuando la vi por primera vez. Uh, and I wasn't convinced until I watched the movie, like all of you. Y pude comprender en el momento que la vi, eh, porque Augusto nunca se negó a hacerla. And it was then when I watched it that I could understand why Augusto never said no. Eh, fue el acto 
creo yo, de mayor consecuencia al final de su vida. It was the most consequential act that he did towards the end of his life. Um, Maite, I, I love how uh, in your work in general, and this one in particular, your your presence is, you know, on notice. And it just feels like it just, you know, we're entering this home and it exists yeah. just for us. I wonder if you could talk about the process perhaps a little on the technical practicalities of how it works, you know, when you're shooting a film so intimate as this? Well, um, I use, uh, spend a lot of time with people that I shoot. This film take five years for me to shoot it. So it's, it's say the people get used to the crew and to the camera with time. So I never rush and I never put pressure on and I try to be there and to be a company, but never, of course that everybody knows the present and the present changed, the presence changed things, but you try to be invisible, a company, but an invisible company. And, and in this case it was very special for me because it's the first time that I, I was with two persons that they really know how to deal with the cameras in different ways. Augusto, my DP, that is my my cameraman of all my films, was the same cameraman of Augusto's program. So when we arrived and Pablo arrived, he moved with the camera, like with the body, like if we has, he was going to conduct a TV program, and it was really funny. And Paulina, in the opposite side, as she's an act actress, she really fast forgets of the presence of the camera. So for me, we're more easy person to work with the camera than other characters that I work with. And I think that we construct together the confidence and, and the understanding of how we were going to do it. But I think, especially in this film, the difference is that the deep level of intimacy happened because she took the camera during COVID uh, because in, in Chile the lockdown was very long, was two years of a strict lockdown. And I was like, okay, this finishes, uh, this film is finished here. And it was, I sent the camera, not expecting to have good material. Uh, I only tried to teach to her how to use it. He, she never learn uh, it's everything out of focus but uh, in spite that she didn't learn it was a kind of material that even if I have all the access of the world I would never got that level of intimacy because only a couple can have that piece of profound uh, situations when nobody's there even if we are three in the crew the sound the sound man the cameraman and me it's a presence, but that moments are only because they are alone. And I think that that obstruction at the end, the lockdown, it's a big, big gift of intimacy to the film. Paulina, do you want to talk about what was it like for you to take the camera on your own and shoot those scenes? <laughs> I know I did a I know I did a horrible job. Eh, bueno, pero pero eso también testimonia eh, la, el nivel de honestidad con que se se filmó eso. Yeah, but that's also a testament to uh, with how much honesty the project was filmed with. Fue una manera de mantenernos comunicadas en ese periodo. It was a way to stay in touch, um, Mike and myself, throughout that period of time. Y también fue una compañía muy importante para mí en momentos en que estábamos tan solos. And it was a, a way to feel uh, accompanied in, in, during a time where, where we were otherwise very lonely. Así como ustedes, hoy día, um, Maite se convirtió en un testigo presencial de lo que nosotros vivíamos todos los días. So Maite became a, a, a witness to some of the things we lived every day. Y lo maravilloso es que 
Yo eh, simplemente ponía la cámara, eh, apretaba play y grababa durante muchas horas, una mañana completa, una tarde completa y en la noche tres, cuatro horas hasta que me daba cuenta que ¡oh! Uh, se había acabado la batería. I would just uh, set the camera, press play and let it roll for a full morning, an entire evening, uh, during the night, three or four hours, until I realized that the battery had run out. <laughs> Entonces, es el respeto, es el talento, por cierto, y es también el cariño con el cual Maite selecciona, edita, eh, el que hace que ese material sea parte de la película. So it was through Maite's uh, talent, uh, respect, and love that that footage that I took was able to take meaning throughout the assembly process. Maite, tell us about that assembly process. You know, you, you had so much material, I'm sure. How do you build a narrative that doesn't have, you know, a, a sort of determined end goal? And you're sort of going with the flow of this relationship. I wonder how you make it seem so effortless. It was a very big challenge because this narrative was not only lineal because if we only do it like the lineal structure it was like an announcing deterioration and you know the end of that in this case uh, i knew that i had to construct a feeling and, and a point of view of what i learned about memory and that was the job of the editing and in the selection. And as, a, as in the beginning, I start only with the idea of make a film about love, about this love story. In the road, Augusto, I felt that he sent me signs of how I had to do it. When, when I realized that uh, it was a man that always remembered some things like he always remember his friend that he lost during dictatorship. So I had to make the relationship with that past to understand that present. So it started to be a puzzle and a play of associations to the past, to the present, to understand that moment. And, and that construction was for me to make the point it's in the eternal memory, like that body always remember some stuff, he always remember dictatorship, he always remember his love to Paulina, uh, he always remember his obsession, and he always remember his concern with historical memory. And that is something that I built in the editing because he put me the signs in the shooting. Uh, Paulina, uh can you tell us a little about the first time you watched the, the finished film? I mean, you've been, you know, an actress and you perform many characters throughout your career, but this is, you know, your life on screen. I wonder how difficult it was, or not perhaps, for you to, to witness it. La verdad es que hasta el día de hoy nunca he pensado mucho como en mí <laughs> cuando he visto la película. Uh, truth be told, I really haven't thought about myself when I've, the times I've watched the movie. La primera vez que la vi, Augusto ya estaba muy deteriorado físicamente. And the first time I saw it, uh, Augusto was in, in very poor and deteriorating health already. Y fue muy difícil después de verla, volver a verlo. And it was very hard uh, after watching the movie to see him again. Ahora, cuando la he visto con ustedes, eh, eh, la sensación es muy distinta porque Augusto falleció hace tres meses. So now that I watch it uh, again with everyone, the feeling is very different because Augusto died three months ago. Y simplemente es maravilloso volver a verlo. And now it's just wonderful to be able to see him again. Es, es, eh, es lo que hace el arte, la transformación 
de una vida, en, en una historia que es parte de la historia de nuestro país y, y al mismo tiempo parte de la historia de cualquiera de ustedes. That, that's what art does. It, it tells the story and the transformation of not just a country's history, but every individual history of anyone who watches the film. Entonces, es un regalo. So it's a gift. Maite, can you talk about the concept of memory um, as we see it in the film? I think there's, there's a moment in the film that's very powerful, as you mentioned, when Augusto remembers his friend who, who passed away, and it's such a you know, kind of visceral when you know the, the fact that sometimes I feel like when we think about memory, we perhaps we 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 will lose those memories. That those bad memories will be the ones that that that, that go first. I wonder if you could talk about you know shooting that scene, that moment, and and the concept of memory. Yeah, what what I learned with him is that the feelings always work there until the end, the good ones and the bad ones, and. And I think that he gave me, when I, Paulina found very at the end of the editing process in a furniture, like very lost, the archive of the opening of the book, when he's saying his speech about memory, like he, he gave me the key to understand because he said, uh, this is the year of the commemoration of the 50 years of the coup in Chile. So there is a lot of discussion about commemoration dates, events. And he said in that speech, like, the numbers are not only important, the dates are not only important. The, good, the important thing is to make the mornings with our feelings. And, and that, I think, it's, it's the point, like, we have to remember always the feeling of the historical events that provoke to you. And that is the heritage that we have to transmit in the testimonies. And this is what this film is doing with the feelings, like to transmit what this couple and this man uh, are feeling all the time. And there is a thing that happened also in the film, like with COVID, that the, the radio appeared and the radio is telling the number of passes away, the number of death and the numbers, and that numbers are only numbers and there are stories, there are people that are feeling, the numbers doesn't mean anything. So I think that is, I also didn't remember how many years was with Paulina, but he clearly remember his love all the time and that is important thing. Um. When, when did you know that, that you had everything you needed, that it was, that the filming of this film was, was over? No, I think that I, I wanted to make this film for 10, 15 years. I always said, until the end, and, and I never feel that I have, I have all the materials, but the end was very clear for me, and it was very abstract, the question for us about the end, because the end, when is when he passed away, when, which was. And the end for me was the day that he was walking with her and he said, I'm not anymore. And she said, you are not, I'm not. And he was saying like, I'm not the person that I used to be. And he was feeling uncomfortable with, with himself. And it was the first time after five years that I felt uncomfortable with the camera, so that was the moment that I stopped shooting and I went to the editing room, but of course that that will continue if, if that was not the feeling of the end, but it was very clear for us, yeah. Paulina, I wonder if you could talk about, I love the, the scenes when you're on stage in the theater and you know Augusto is you know either watching you or at times on stage with you when you're rehearsing. Uh, was that something that you were doing for a long time? Sí, fue algo totalmente natural 
Eh, ustedes saben que Augusto estaba totalmente activo cuando fue diagnosticado con Alzheimer. Yeah, it was something totally natural. Uh, Augusto was very active when he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Y, y poco a poco tuvo que ir dejando los trabajos que hacía porque no, no podía seguir trabajando. He, he slowly had to give up his job because he just couldn't carry on with the duties. Y entonces, como le pasa a toda la familia, eh, yo tenía que trabajar. So as it happens with every family, I had to take up working. Y, y tenía que trabajar el doble. So I had to work twice as much. Y fue algo muy simple. Augusto no se podía quedar solo en la casa. So it was something as simple as Augusto couldn't be left alone at home. Y así como hacen muchas mujeres eh, que tienen hijos. And just as many uh, women with children. Sobre do. todo en esta época. Uh, especially now. Bueno, los hijos comenzaron a, eh, a llevarse los trabajos. Augusto me acompañaba a todos mis trabajos. Yeah, so, you know, the, the same way you take children to your work, uh, she started taking, uh, I started taking Augusto to my work. Yo fui contratada en TVN, en la televisión pública. Uh, I, I was hired by the uh, public television. Y él iba feliz a grabar... Eh, teleserie que yo hacía yeah, he, he along to shoot, porque él volvía a TVN it was, it was to, y en to TVN todo el mundo hablaba con él there, to him, él se him. tomaba café conversaba yeah, he, he coffee, mientras yo trabajaba y she, grababa escenas y es algo que ustedes también lo vieron en la película And it, it, it is something that it, that it is shown in a movie. Um, ahí en esos espacios, en el teatro, en la televisión, en la universidad. It was in those spaces, in the theater, in, in the television sets, in the university. No era solamente yo que lo cuidaba, sino todo mi entorno. It wasn't just me taking, uh, looking after him. It was everyone, all the environment and everyone around him. Y eso es algo que hemos aprendido las sociedades, ¿no? No, no hay que apartar a la gente. And that's something we, we've learned as a, as a society not to isolate and push people away. Este es un, es una, una dificultad que tiene la persona que está enferma. This is a, a hardship that uh, the person that is sick is going through. Su familia. Uh, their family. Pero también está la, está el barrio. But it's also the community, the neighborhood. Y, y la comunidad entera. And yeah, the full, the full community around them. Esto es un problema de salud pública. This is a, a problem of public health. Y es un, es un desafío para hacer sociedades que tengan en su centro en las políticas de cuidado. And it's, it is a challenge for a society that wants to have uh, these kind of uh, public care uh, at its center, public care policies at its center. Before I pass it on to some questions from the audience, uh, Maite, I wanted to ask you about the music. I think that it's just so perfectly yeah. chosen and just really starts pulling the tears out of our eyes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, it was music that I heard in their house and I selected because they are very classical romantic songs in Latin America and there are covers of that classical songs making for other artists that I love for the film. Mm -hmm. Over here. Uh, for each person who might take it was incredible to see Raul in the film. I worked on Ant there. Mm -hmm. Last film we made in Chile. It was a group that again they like, invited us to go, and it was um, Pascal Wexler and Saul Landau and Raul's last film. And it was incredible to see him there. And um, the, the uh, sorry, I thought, I think it was, I think I felt when he said that that was the last moment he wanted to shoot, that felt, I could feel, that was the time when I felt you behind the camera at that moment, that you were there as a third party to that moment, and it was an extraordinary moment. And um, for Pauli, um, first of all, he had so much life force, the two of you shared so much life force, that as we watched the rage and the terror, and the, this was more of the life force, it just added the expression somewhere. 
And I'm just curious how long it was from when he got the um, diagnosis to the decline. What happened? How that time was? Yes, ma'am. So I can have some tests. Do I have a left Um. Yeah, the Raul Ruiz, it's unbelievable. And it was a footage that she found also in, in their house, was completely lost. And they have a, they were friends. I was to produce also films of, of Raul Ruiz, so they have a very close relationship and, and an important creative dialogue. Which one? The, the one that he makes in television. Um, yes. The, he made three films for TV and television that I was to produce. La Recta Provincia, it was the, the yeah. And, and about, yeah, that moment, it's of course the moment that you can film me because I, 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 I was feeling myself there and that was yeah, the, the moment that we finished, yes. Yeah. Bueno, eh, Augusto, antes de fallecer, eh, 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 la enfermedad se desarrolló por casi 10 años. Uh, before he died, the, the disease uh, took, it was about 10 years. Esta, esta es una enfermedad eh, que tiene una sobrevida muy alta. Uh, this, this is a disease that can have a, a, a life expect a very long life expectancy. Por eso eh, se, se dice lo que yo siempre digo, que es una muerte en cámara lenta. Oh, that's why I always say that it is like death in slow motion. Y, y el declive mayor eh, ocurrió en la pandemia. And the biggest decline happened during the pandemic. Y veo que muchos dicen sí, porque es algo que nos afectó a todos, ¿no? Especialmente a los niños y a los adultos mayores. Especially children and um, elderly people. Augusto eh, avanzó años en meses. Yeah. Uh, Augusto's disease advanced like years in a matter of months. Eh, para que nos podamos podamos estar absolutamente convencidos que el aislamiento de las personas nos hace mucho daño. Yeah, so this is a testament that uh, isolating and, and loneliness uh, is very, very harmful. Any questions? Hello there. Hi, uh, where is the number for that uh, when I make documentaries because I think that there are fabrics of experience for me like I I am not only thinking in the audience I am thinking in the people that I want to be and I want to share for many years I think that I will never can choose a character that I don't want to be with and and in this case I even in the painful situations, I always have a good time with them. I never feel pain in that house. I always felt joy and happiness and love. And it's what kind of couples that when people are happy, you want to be with them. And, and that was my feeling. And, and I am, as a filmmaker, <laughs> uh, looking for love in general and in in all situations so 
of I learn a way of love in a difficult moment that I have never seen. I learned that you can uh, take care with the same love of the, the first day. I always said that I remember, I remember Paulina the first time that we were talking that I told her like, okay, flag your son. And he told me, it's not my son, it's my husband. <laughs> and it was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> it's super clear. And, and yeah, that was for me a, a big lesson because I see always a couple until the end. Yeah. We have time for one more question, anyone? Go ahead. Yes, um, beautiful film. And uh, my question to you is, uh, I compare this one with the more agent, that also we, people were taking care of, they were helping each other in, in this place. And uh, my question to you is about us, as the sandwich generation, how we can help. They call us the sandwich generation because we are dealing with our personalized work and also with our parents and we are in the middle. So they call it the sandwich generation. So how we can continue dealing with helping everyone in the I think it, it's exactly the same message in the mall agent and here. It's to don't uh, make people being isolated from society when they are dependent. It's, it's exactly uh, the same point in the small agent, they were isolated in the retirement home and nobody went to see them. And here we are seeing a man that was good because he was in relationship with others. So for me, that it's it's the concern and the message. How Paulina has said, like the only way to evolve as a society is to everyone to take care of another human being in some point of our life. And that is life at the end. Everybody have to take care in one moment. It's not going to be all life, but we have to assume that. And if we are not going to assume, we are not going to evolve. Thank you so much, Paulina. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.